tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. Hello. In the early days of computer graphics, people would ask, this uh, image in Photoshop is so lovely, how can I hold it in my hand? Well, then you would print it out on, a, on expensive paper with an expensive inkjet printer and then uh, hang it on your wall. But the wall space is limited. So uh, I used to say the screens are so lovely that uh, we don't need to print out everything. And it's uh, similar with uh, 3D computer graphics. We create interesting objects using Polygon or NURBS technology. And then we want to hold the objects in our hands? Not really. But uh, I try to do that and the result is quite inviting. And uh, you might consider doing this yourself and I try to guide you through that process. What I initially wanted to do is something I have to, well, postpone to one of the next tutorials because I haven't done it yet, is create a CNC um, object from uh, 3D object in Maya. Uh, this is a little bit more complex, uh, but uh, today we do a 3D print and uh, we don't do it ourselves. I don't have a 3D printer, so we make others do this for us. Enjoy this video. If you want to do this and not buy expensive machines and materials, you search for 3D printing services or something like that and you get uh, quite a variety of shops even close by where you live I guess and uh, one for example here the top entry is 3D hubs I've never heard of them so I'm not affiliated with them in any way and um, I want to get an, uh, an instant quote and they support certain kinds of file formats typically STL, DXF and STEP now in Maya you have what is called the plugin manager and in the plugin manager for example if you type in STL you see that there's an STL translator and I loaded it if it's not loaded in your system load it now let's create an object a very simple object like this torus and we'll export it export the selection with this option box and I export it as file type STL into my folder 3D print and I call it Taurus 1. Now I export the selection in another format namely as DXF. I call it Taurus 2. The third variation is as a step file. Where is it? Step ATF export Again, no options here, and I export the selection, and I call it Taurus 3. Get an instant quote. And as you can see, I've been here before. I create a new request, and I select the files. So here you see that it supports only step files and STL files and no DXF files. That's fine with me. Uh, the odd thing about is about it is that the STL file is 40 kilobytes and the torus in the step format is only 3 kilobytes. That's a pathetically small amount of bytes so it probably doesn't work. So let's try the torus STL. One of your parts contains an error. I only uploaded one part anyway. Please resolve all your errors before saving to the quote. STL files are not suitable for CNC machining, sheet metal or injecting, uh, injection molding. Please re-upload your part in one of the following formats, STEP, IGS, etc. Do we have IGS? Export selection. We do. IGS. So let's export it as IGS. And I call it Taurus 4. And now Maya crashes. So, second attempt, create a new quote request and I select the file again and I see the IGS right here. It's only one kilobyte. There's obviously something wrong with it. 
And sometimes in my tutorials I raise questions I cannot give answers. We have an error again, we cannot process this. We're not able to detect 3D geometry in your file. Okay, later on we'll try this portal here. It's called MePart and it's based in South Germany, in the southeast of Germany, actually close to uh, the Czech Republic. And uh, it's a very nice area there. The town is called Weiden. And uh, I just can rec recommend you to travel there. And they've been very helpful. And we'll upload STL there. So maybe you are more lucky than I am with uh, other portals. But uh, we'll stick to me part then. We don't want to give them uh, this simple torus. But create something more complex. And for that purpose I go to Curves and Surfaces. And to the side window or front window and I create three curves. Now in the perspective view they are more or less on top of each other so I separate them and I create a loft. Here in the attribute editor you find the section spans and we can for our purpose for printing we need lots of geometry which is just fine here and uh, now I select this nice NURBS surface by the way I made a 12-part course about NURBS modeling on Udemy and Skillshare and um, from the beginner to the advanced modeling techniques uh, but now I want to go to modify and I convert the NURBS surface to a polygon surface and here I like to choose the op option box because I don't want triangles I want quads because these are quads basically and the uh, polygon topology should resemble more or less the topology of the NURBS surface so what I do now I delete the previous objects and now I have only this surface we could go to mesh and Retopologize, which makes a much cleaner setup of this surface. And for 3D printing, is always good to have even more geometry, as opposed to computer games, actually, where you don't want many polygons. You could actually smooth this and smooth this again by typing in two. We have a very dense material now. I move this a little bit up and convert it into cloth. Go to FX. Here is N cloth, and from the selected object, I create N cloth. Now you see this red line developing from left to right, and once it's finished at the end of my time slider, that's frame 120, I can run the simulation, the cloth simulation, and scrub in the timeline, which is quite a nice service. So it goes down like this. And it doesn't do very much. You see more wrinkles here appear. Now I want the cloth to collide to basically to make something more interesting happening. And I choose the torus, move it a little bit up. And in order to make this a collider, I need to select the cloth and the torus, go to end cloth, and I create a passive collider. And now we run the simulation again. We wait until that red line has developed a little bit further. And I think now I can start scrubbing here. I did several tutorials about cloth simulation. And I don't want to get into that. Just search my channel for it. This looks beautiful. And uh, I go back and I create a plane. Again, I select the cloth and the plane and I create a passive collider. Run the simulation again. I want to make it settle a little bit more on that floor. And I think this is perfectly fine because now 
I select that geometry and I duplicate it. Control D and I hide all the rest. Now I have this interesting object which is a cloth object which actually was a cloth object because now it's an, a simple polygon object with a high density of polygon quads and it's flat at the bottom which is very nice and now comes the trick at least for the me part printing process it's a 3d printing pro process and not a CNC process I scale it up to fit just about the size of that grid because oddly enough the the grid is in centimeters this is one centimeter this is two centimeters so this is 10 centimeters but for the for when I export it as STL file this is four centimeters don't ask me why so this is four centimeters and the height is probably well two centimeters or something like that let's give this a shot now I export the selection STL export export the selection now I call it cloth now I go to that portal again and I choose a file step STL or DXF I choose STL I choose that file it has a size of 1.5 megabytes which is a good size in my opinion so I open it and now the software the web portal of me part analyzes the data And it's quite satisfied with it and as I said before it's 3.7 millimeters by 8 millimeters high and 3.7 centimeters in this dimension and it resembles quite well what we just modeled now I want a last step before we actually order this for 12 euro I want to change the resolution have a look at the polygons here let me s um, zoom in a little bit we have quite a crude polygon structure up here let us see if we can change something about it I go back and in Maya I go to modeling and I smooth that mesh even further maybe two steps so it's a really dense model it will produce many more polygons and be a much bigger file file export selection STL six export and I call it cloth 2 with a higher resolution now back to the 3d printing service cloth 2 open and I get an error again I think because of the extreme density of that model and keep in mind that Maya is not a CAD CAM system it's made for character animation clouds fire etc special effects not for 3d printing but it does quite a good job if you start experimenting with file sizes file formats and dimensions of your objects we're getting to the end of this tutorial and I must tell you that I learned quite a bit I communicated uh, very intensely and nicely with the people from me part and uh, for example the torus did not work because it was not a closed object so they asked me to create a closed object that's why I introduce that plane and put both things together the torus the cloth torus so to say and uh, the ground plane so uh, it was closed at the bottom then I got an email from me part we cannot print this with a regular print uh, method because we cannot print paper because the ground plane is infinitely thin in the STL format so uh, what I did next was uh, and that finally succeeded I uh, used a closed object which is this uh, human creature and I applied the cloth deformation to it and scaled it up quite a bit even more than the torus 
and then I send it to them. And here comes a little parcel and let us open it. <laughs> 